well, it's New Year's Eve, and I just yelled at a defendant that's surrendering to prison next week. Um, uh, so let's talk about it. Hi, everyone. It's Justin McCourney with White Collar Advice, and I'm going to jump right in with New Year's goals and resolutions. Just like in prison and in society, people have New Year's goals. When I was at Taft Federal Prison Camp, I frequently heard prisoners say, on January 1st, I'm going to begin to write the book, and I'm going to begin to lose weight, and all of these promises. And much of the time, because the habit of exercising or writing isn't ingrained, the goal falls by the wayside. So I am not a proponent of New Year's resolutions. I have never had them. Certainly I have goals, but I have never had them. If you identify your values, whether it's family, religion, character, if you've yet to be sentenced, maybe it's getting the shortest possible prison sentence, serving in the prison of your choosing, qualifying for the substance abuse program, rebuilding your reputation, holding your lawyer accountable, on and on and on. So if you have all of these myriad goals you want to accomplish, why in your right mind would you wait until a certain date to make it happen? You have to make it happen, begin making it happen today. Part of the reason I yelled at this defendant, and we've since made up and we're going to have a cup of coffee next week before he goes in, I was frustrated because he's a lawyer, educated man, struggling with his reputation, his wife is threatening to leave him, he has young children who are scared to death that their father is going to prison, and instead he wanted to talk about, you know, how do I get the best job in jail? or you know, the best bunk, and you know, tell me exactly what I should buy in the commissary. And I grew frustrated because I said, Bud, is that really what you want? Is that really what is of the most importance to you right now, whether you should buy tuna or roast beef in the commissary? I guess those things are important. What do you want? And what do you want who's watching this? I don't say this necessarily to, um, to inspire you this is if anything to remind you of how difficult this is of how hard federal prison can be even though it can be the easiest part coming home is difficult if you're not ready so i yelled at this defendant i was like dude i wish you were next to me because i would dump a big bucket of cold ice on your head who cares about the job you have in jail what are you doing to prove worthy of the love your wife gives you and to let your kids know this will not be a defining moment in your life and you know, he said, no, you're right, I'm focusing on the wrong things. So I say to him, I say to you, what are you after? And what are your real goals? And why do you really need to wait until January 1st to pursue them? So look, your values are going to change in life. They're going to change in prison. When I was in federal prison, one of my highest values was running a great deal. But now that I have a family, I don't run as much. I have other interests. What is it that you're after? What is it that you're looking to pursue and achieve? I would argue that the only way to accomplish anything, especially with a white collar conviction and the, all of the obstacles that follow it, is to, number one, you have to embrace being overwhelmed because there are people that are going to call you absolutely crazy. If you want to write a book or a blog or speak openly about what you did, people are going to call you nuts. They're going to tell you to lay low. Don't talk about it. It's okay. You're going to feel alone a lot of the time. I felt alone very much in prison. I kind of liked it. You're going to feel alone. You're going to feel ostracized because other prisoners are going to be telling you that your efforts are worthless and don't nobody care because you're a convicted felon, both from staff and from guards. Of course, those same, same men are the people that came home and saw my client list and you know, viewed my efforts a little differently, but I didn't care. You have to not care. You have to not be beholden to anyone on the inside but your family who endures such a great deal. And if you've identified what you want, why would you wait till January 1st to pursue them? I share this analogy. When I began, began playing golf, I wanted to quit because it was so hard. I wanted to master it in a day. I was too overwhelmed. When I began to do it in bite-sized pieces and began to pursue it every day, much like I did running, riding, or golf, or any other exercise that cliched tortoise in the hair, slow and steady wins the race, the daily pursuit of incremental goals, my life began to change. If you need to make these daily incremental goals, if you need to pursue a path that's going to make you whole with your family and your community and build a career, a six-figure income that you're probably used to, why would you wait till January 1st? Further, are you ingraining the habit every single day? And I have often said, if you've mastered a skill, or in my case, I no longer need the discipline to write or to run, just like I don't need discipline to brush my teeth. 
it's a part of my life because I worked at it every single day. So the problem with New Year's goals is somebody's going to start something on the first, and if the habit is not ingrained, it just falls by the wayside with distraction and laziness and complacency, which are the true enemies of a federal prison, of a productive federal prison sentence. So I'm going to close this video by letting you know that while I opened up yelling at this white collar defendant because I care and I needed him to be fixated and focused on the right things, and I'm grateful that he told me he appreciated my honesty and that I didn't sugarcoat things. He appreciated that I told him that no elixir or magic pill exists to make this pain go away and that while you might want to wish or hope your way to a better outcome, that ain't right for me. But moreover, it's not right for your family who will suffer with you away. So to close, forget about New Year's resolutions. If it's August 1st or July 9th or September 15th, if there's something that you should be doing in prison or at any time, then do it. If you've identified your values, family, religion, fitness, character, whatever it might be, pursue them daily. Hold yourself accountable to those values because if you do not, then you're simply a contradiction. You're a hypocrite like I was before I went to prison. And I've worked every single day to not just state my values, to live faithfully to them. And I don't need to wait until January 1st for that to happen. If you'd like a copy of my book, Lessons from Prison, it's free. Actually, lastly, on the top of Lessons from Prison, in my last video, I mentioned how a guy said my book and blogs and videos suck. And then, you know, shortly after that, I got a nice message from someone who said, hey, I really found value in your book. It's the same book. It's the same words. It's not the book. It's not the video. It's not the blog. It's the person who takes the knowledge and implements it. That's all. Many people are going to watch this video. Many people have read my book. Some say it's garbage and a waste of time, and they nitpick on details. And I get an email every now and again from someone that said they saw a typo on page 87 of Lessons from Prison. I appreciate it. Do you get the bigger picture? What are you trying to achieve? What are you after? So that's what I say to all of you. All of you have access to resources and mentors and books and guides. Who's right for you? What approach is best for your family? But moreover, what are you doing with those tools? What are you doing with the assets that are being given to you? That's what you should be thinking about on December 31st rather than what it is your New Year's resolutions will be on January 1st. Well, that's a wrap. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to watch my videos, to read my book, to support my work. I know you're all very busy with a lot of responsibilities competing for your attention. Um, so as we close this year, I just would like to thank you. And I'm very grateful that you've allowed me to come into your life a little bit and help prepare you for what can be a difficult time. But I tell you, if done well, with the right plan, you'll look back at the end of your life and this will be a little blip, a tiny little blip in your life. Um, so thank you all very much for allowing me to help teach and educate you. It means a, a great deal to me. Thank you. Have a wonderful 2017.